A fast-moving object the size of Manhattan is hurtling towards our solar system, and it will make its closest pass to Earth on December 17th. Comet, asteroid, or something else? What the James Webb Telescope just detected near 3I Atlas is not what anyone expected. This object has just been discovered. 3I Atlas was discovered on July 1st by the NASA-funded Atlas Survey. The moment it locked onto this interstellar object, Webb's sensors picked up chemical signatures that don't belong anywhere near our solar system. This was a, a really dramatic difference from what had been seen previously. It picked up a ratio so specific, so unnatural, that it raised quiet alarms across multiple observatories. Now, Using all the assets we have on Earth and in space to get as much data as possible about this mysterious object. NASA has remained quiet through it all, but the data is already out, and scientists who have seen the numbers now believe 3I Atlas defies explanation. The detection. 3i Atlas first crossed into our solar system, it got attention fast. It was coming from outside our system, and its orbit made it clear this wasn't just another frozen rock. This was only the third object in recorded history confirmed to have entered our system from another star. The 3i, marking it as the third interstellar object ever discovered. But the real mystery began when the James Webb Space Telescope turned its eyes toward it. NASA never turns Webb casually. Its time is reserved for only the most important questions in astronomy. So when it was assigned to study 3i Atlas, the goal was to capture its chemical fingerprint. The Webb Telescope uses deep spectroscopic tools that can break down light into its core components. From that, scientists can read the exact mix of gases and compounds in whatever object it's observing. And that's where everything started to shift. Webb's first batch of readings came in with two unexpected patterns. First, the object had an extremely high concentration of carbon dioxide. As insulation ramps up, volatile ices sublimate faster, dragging dust off the surface to form a brighter, broader coma and tail. This by itself might not sound strange, until you realize what it means. In most solar system comets, water is the dominant compound. But here water was not only low, it was heavily outnumbered. The ratio of carbon dioxide to water was completely off the scale. That tells us something clear. This object did not form near a sun. It formed in a place so cold and so distant that water could never gather the way it does in our region of space. But it didn't stop there. Webb picked up another set of compounds. Methanol and hydrogen cyanide. Both of these are complex organic molecules. They are found in trace amounts in some comets. But in the case of 3i Atlas, their presence was amplified, significantly. These were not just leftovers from the formation of some distant ice ball. They were concentrated. And this raised a troubling possibility, because methanol and hydrogen cyanide are not just chemicals. They are among the essential precursors for life. On Earth, these molecules play roles in the early development of amino acids. They are part of the puzzle that leads from chemistry to biology. So now, Webb was looking at an interstellar object that was not only chemically imbalanced, but unusually rich in the building blocks of life. All of this from a place we cannot yet pinpoint. And when scientists asked how to classify what they were seeing, NASA's response was simple. It's a comet. Case closed. NASA scientists say it's a comet. It could be alien technology. You heard that right. So. Does this mean ET is real? But the scientific community didn't close the case because the data pointed to something that looked less like a natural chunk of ice and more like a container, a vessel of some kind filled with ingredients that seemed deliberately preserved. NASA released only the most simplified story. They called it a comet and pointed to the visible outgassing as proof. What they left out was the composition, precision, and rhythm because beyond the chemicals, this object had a pulse. The James Webb Telescope was not alone in picking this up. Ground-based telescopes in Europe and South America confirmed it. Every 16 hours and 10 minutes, the light from 3i Atlas brightens, then dims, like clockwork. The leading explanation is rotation, that as the object spins, different surfaces reflect light differently, creating a rhythm. But when that rhythm is perfect, when it does not drift, when it remains locked to the same interval down to the decimal, questions begin to form. The more precise the anomaly, the harder it becomes to label as random, and the more consistent the pattern, the harder it becomes to ignore design. What came next was even harder to explain. The Anatomy of the Anomaly You cannot understand what makes 3i Atlas different without going deeper into the science of comets. And more importantly, what this object does wrong, chemically speaking, when compared to everything else we have ever studied. A normal comet is dirty, chaotic, and unpredictable. It is made of frozen gases, dust, and rock. It behaves erratically. Sometimes it flares. Sometimes it stays quiet. 
The ratios of gases inside are messy because they formed in the unstable outskirts of the early solar system. 3i Atlas, a third ever interstellar object observed from Earth, currently racing through our solar system. But with 3i Atlas, the ratios are not messy. They are sharp, clean, and suggest precision. Scientists measure these things in terms of relative abundance. For example, how much carbon dioxide appears compared to water vapor. In our system, most comets have a carbon dioxide to water ratio somewhere between 1 to 5 percent. Occasionally, 10 percent. Never more than that. But in the case of 3i Atlas, early data suggests that the ratio is not 5 percent. It is closer to 50. That flips the entire structure of the comet upside down. This is not even within the expected range for outer system objects. That kind of ratio points to an origin in the coldest parts of interstellar space, far beyond the Oort cloud, in regions where light barely exists and temperature never climbs above negative 400 degrees Fahrenheit. It is a place where water cannot condense easily, but carbon dioxide can, which means 3i Atlas was born in a freezer, a cosmic vault where only the most stable materials can survive. This chemical often appears in the coma the cloud of gas and dust that surrounds a comet's core. That by itself would be fascinating. But then the second part of the anomaly shows up. Methanol, hydrogen cyanide, in high concentrations. They are signs of chemistry. They are the ingredients for more complex structures. On Earth, methanol has been used in laboratory experiments that simulate pre-life conditions. It reacts easily with other compounds to form amino acid chains. Hydrogen cyanide is even more important. It is one of the few molecules known to trigger the synthesis of nucleic acid bases, the same ones found in DNA and RNA. Put simply, these are the first tools life uses to build itself. Now, one or two molecules like this can be found in regular comets, but the concentrations are small. What Webb found near 3i Atlas is not background noise. It is a spike and focused pattern. The mainstream view says that maybe 3i Atlas is just an unusually preserved sample of early interstellar material. Maybe it passed through a starless region and gathered this rare chemistry by coincidence. It is possible. But there is another theory, one that steps outside coincidence. That theory says, this is not a mistake of nature, but rather a sample by design. If you wanted to transport life-building chemicals across light years, this is exactly what you would do. You would package them in a stable form, inside an icy container. You would keep the temperature low. You would give it a coating of carbon dioxide to shield it from radiation. You would point it at a star system and let the natural pull of gravity do the rest. This is called the panspermia theory, the idea that life is seeded, not sparked. That star system receives the ingredients rather than generating them from scratch. Because if this object is not tumbling, and if it is not decaying, and if it is instead pulsing with locked regularity, then the implications become much larger. The next piece of this story explains why NASA has stayed so quiet. The refusal to explain. NASA has always balanced discovery with credibility. In the case of 3i Atlas, that balance has started to crack, because the more questions that come up, the quieter NASA seems to get. On paper, their approach looks reasonable. The official position is this. 3i Atlas is a comet. It is venting gas as it passes near the sun. Its behavior is energetic but natural. End of story. And for the average observer, that answer is enough. It explains the bright tail. It explains the pulse. In just weeks, Atlas had gone from a faint speck to a fully realized comet with a streaming tail. It explains the visibility. But when you dig into the technical papers and compare them with the press releases, a pattern emerges. The peer-reviewed data is dense, cautious, and full of footnotes. It admits there are anomalies. It notes the strange ratios. It points to the unclassified objects seen near it. But none of this makes it into NASA's public summaries. Why? First, there's the issue of consensus. Before NASA can release any extraordinary claim, it must go through layers of internal review. Specialists debate the wording. Outside peer reviewers check the math. Every interpretation is compared to established models. If there is disagreement, the agency defaults to the simplest available label, and right now, that label is Comet. Second, there is the problem of precedent. In 2017, when Oumuamua passed through our solar system, a similar debate happened. It was fast, it was flat, and it behaved in ways that no natural object should. But NASA stuck with the word Comet then too, even though no tail was observed. They refused to entertain the possibility of artificial origin. When Harvard's A.V. Loeb suggested it might be a probe, the backlash was instant. NASA learned a lesson from that event, a public relations lesson. Do not speculate in the press. Do not drift from safe ground. Keep the headlines clear and controlled. Because once you let mystery in, 
you cannot get it out. Third, there is the issue of timing. The James Webb Space Telescope is new. Its data pipeline is not simple. It takes time to translate infrared signals into readable chemistry. The full results from a single deep scan can take months to process and verify. During that time, scientists are not allowed to speak openly about raw findings. Everything is embargoed until confirmation. And even then, the agency must decide how to frame the story. So, while independent researchers may already be seeing something unusual in the web data, NASA is stuck in a holding pattern, waiting for the math to become unarguable, waiting for a consensus that may never come. But here's the real reason this silence is dangerous, because the public is not stupid. When official agencies gloss over details or oversimplify complicated findings, it creates a vacuum. And in that vacuum, speculation thrives. Independent astronomers, citizen scientists, and even amateur sky watchers are pulling down the same data. They are comparing light curves. They are reading chemical profiles. They are not bound by protocol. And when they see carbon dioxide ratios that don't match any known comet, they talk about it. If NASA publicly acknowledges the anomalies, even without calling them artificial, they lose control of the story. Uh, from images, we also saw that this object is active, which means that around the nucleus there is some coma, which is an indication that this object is in fact a comet. And the agency, which depends on public trust and international cooperation, risks being seen as reckless. So instead, they say less. They hide behind the word comet. They delay full reports. They let the data cool down before offering any interpretation. But the longer they wait, the more it looks like they are hiding something. Because if 3i Atlas really is carrying an engineered chemical payload, if its pulse really is a stabilization mechanism, if its ratios really do defy all natural models, then NASA is not just looking at a strange rock. They are looking at something that does not belong to this solar system. The Hypothesis there's a rule in science. You start with the simplest explanation. If a rock looks like a rock, you don't call it a spaceship. But sometimes the rock pulses. Sometimes it glows in ways it should not. Sometimes its ingredients are not just strange, they are suspicious. That is where we are with 3i Atlas. The moment its chemical signature was released, even in part, one name resurfaced across scientific circles and social media threads, Avi Loeb. A theoretical physicist from Harvard, Loeb has spent years arguing that we must be more open to the possibility that we are not alone. I see a hundred billion stars of the Milky Way galaxy. They look like lights in cabins of a giant spaceship, the Milky Way, sailing through space. And I wonder if there are other passengers in those cabins. He is not guessing. He is following data. And this object, he says, looks familiar. Back in 2017, Loeb was one of the first to say that Oumuamua might not be a natural object, that it lacked the characteristics of a normal comet, that its motion appeared self-correcting, that its acceleration had no visible propulsion source. Most scientists dismissed his claims, but they could not disprove the numbers. Now with 3i Atlas, Loeb has a second data point. And this time, the evidence goes even deeper. Let's start with the molecules. Methanol and hydrogen cyanide, in large quantities, are not just random. They are not even just rare. They are functional. 10% of them looked unusual, and they had a chemical composition very different from solar system materials. Life on Earth needed those molecules to evolve. They appear in the Miller-Urey experiments, the classic tests that replicated early Earth's conditions and created amino acids from basic chemicals. Those same reactions are theoretically possible in deep space, but not in abundance. That is where the Gardner theory comes in. The idea is simple. What if intelligent life, at some point in the past, decided to spread the building blocks of biology to other star systems, not to colonize, not to communicate, just to give life a chance. Seeds of organic chemistry flung across the galaxy, waiting to land somewhere warm. 3i Atlas, in this model, is not a scout. It is a delivery mechanism, a life packet, frozen, shielded, chemically rich. Its job is not to scan or observe. Its job is to survive the journey. This would explain the carbon dioxide armor. The unusually high concentration acts like a thermal insulator. It blocks radiation, stabilizes temperature, and prevents photochemical breakdown. That would be ideal if you were trying to preserve something delicate across a thousand-year journey through interstellar space. But the alternative theory is more unsettling. What if 3i Atlas is not just delivering ingredients, but information? That is the scout model. This idea proposes that 3i Atlas might be a probe, something released by a larger vessel, something we have not yet seen. In this model, the object is not natural at all. It is a machine disguised as debris. 
that would explain the pulse. A 16-hour and 10-minute rhythm, maintained across weeks of observation, is difficult to attribute to random spin alone. It would also explain the lack of decay. Most comets lose material. They fragment. They scatter trails. But 3i Atlas appears consistent. Some theorists have proposed that the jets it vents are not chaotic but directional, that they release at intervals, that they steer, that they are a form of propulsion, not waste. If that is true, then the pulse is both a spin pattern and an engine cycle. And if this is a probe, then it did not arrive alone. Loeb has hinted at this. He calls it the mothership theory, that an interstellar craft could deploy smaller devices into solar systems for closer observation. Each device might appear to us as a comet or asteroid, but hidden in the light curve, in the spectrum, in the math, are signs of construction. For most people, this sounds like science fiction, but for Loeb, it is data-driven probability. He argues that if we expect intelligent life to exist elsewhere, then one of two things must be true. Either they are silent, forever unreachable, or they are exploring. And if they are exploring, then the signs would not be grand or obvious. NASA's silence only makes the theory stronger because every time an agency avoids the uncomfortable question, more people begin to ask it. What if these are not isolated events, but a pattern? The clock is running out on 3i Atlas, and once this object leaves, it is never coming back. The closing window. This object is not going to wait for us. 3i Atlas entered our solar system fast, and it is leaving even faster. Its path is what scientists call hyperbolic. That means it is not orbiting anything. It is just passing through. Once it goes beyond Jupiter's reach, there will be no pulling it back. No second chances, no orbit to wait on. On March 16, 2026, it will come close to Jupiter, uh, within 54 million kilometers from Jupiter. This is not like Halley's Comet, which returns every 76 years. This is a one-time event, a straight-line departure, and that line is accelerating. The further it gets from the Sun, the dimmer it becomes. The dimmer it becomes, the harder it is to study. Already, telescopes that rely on visible light are starting to lose it. Only infrared tools like the James Webb Space Telescope can still see it clearly. But even Webb has limits. It was never designed to track fast, fading targets in the dark outer reaches of the solar system. It is best at holding still and looking deep, not chasing objects that are fleeing toward the edge of the system. That is why the current observation campaign is so intense. Multiple observatories are watching the object at once. Data is being cross-referenced between Webb, Hubble, the Atacama Large Millimeter Array in Chile, and even amateur astronomers using high-end telescopes. Everyone is trying to catch as much detail as possible before the object becomes too faint, because once the light disappears, we are left only with the data, and that data, no matter how strange, will no longer grow. It will just sit there, waiting to be interpreted. That creates pressure. Not just scientific pressure, but institutional pressure. Agencies like NASA and ESA know that their reputations are built on accuracy. They also know that if they publish anything that even hints at artificial design, the consequences are global. The internal reviews are ongoing. The full spectrum results from Webb's analysis are being broken down frame by frame. If we let it slip away without facing the hard questions, we miss more than just a research opportunity. We miss a turning point. This could be the moment when humanity looks at a strange object from another star system and finally asks, not, what is it made of? but who sent it? What NASA might never say. There are moments in history when silence is louder than any announcement, when the refusal to speak says more than words ever could. And right now, in the quiet gaps between data points, between press releases, between the lines of scientific papers, there is something deeply unsettling. What James Webb detected near 3i Atlas does not fit. We are watching something slip away. A visitor from another star system that arrived with a chemical fingerprint no one can explain. An object that pulses with perfect rhythm like a timekeeper. One that carries ingredients critical for life, but in quantities too precise to be random. One that shows none of the chaos we expect. And yet, the official word remains the same. It is a comet, nothing more. But in the background, the real scientists are doing the math and quietly eliminating one natural explanation after another until the list gets shorter, until one question remains. If it is artificial, then who made it? If it was sent, then why now? And if we missed the signs this time, how many others have passed unnoticed? 3i Atlas may leave the solar system without ever revealing its full story. That is the tragedy of objects like this. They do not stop. They do not turn back. Once they are gone, all that remains is what we manage to record. But what we do with that record, that is still up to us.